Welcome back to Spank Ranch Garage. As you may know, I'm a big fan of these inline six BMW motors, especially when you throw a turbo on them. They're a lot of fun, they're very reliable. Uh, one thing they do suffer from is oil pump failures, whether it be the nut backing off or the shaft shearing off. Uh, either way, you lose oil pressure, you blow the bottom end out of the thing. So uh, I do three simple things using all OEM parts to prevent that. I spin one of my motors to 7,300 RPMs. It's a three liter aluminum block and it takes it just fine. Haven't had a failure yet, knock on wood. So stay tuned, I'll show you what I do. Here's the famous oil pump nut here. Okay, this thing's reverse thread. It's known for backing off. People weld them, safety wire them, all kinds of crap. We are gonna take two very small tack welds and tack the nut to the gear. You'll see I put in very small heat. I don't wanna heat the shaft. I don't really wanna heat the gear either. Just want enough to lock the nut without compromising any of the tempering of the steel. Okay, see so I was <clears throat> kind of quick to hit the tack and then hit it with some carb cleaner. The shaft in the center never got hot. That's all she takes right there. Quick little burner on two corners. See this slop here? This actually is not very bad compared to some of these I've taken apart where this chain really slaps. <clears throat> this chain slap puts a lot of stress on the oil pump shaft at high RPMs. So I'm gonna start by replacing the chain with a new OEM BMW chain. They're only about 20 bucks. And then we're gonna put a tensioner on it to further reduce the slap. Okay, so you can see just with a new factory chain, we've reduced the slap pretty substantially. Now this will stretch and I'm sure these sprockets have some wear on them, but it's just cheap insurance for 20, 25 bucks. I always throw a fresh chain on these no matter how good the stock chain is. We are going to install a factory S54 oil pump chain tensioner. This part fits something like this. And what it does is provides additional tension to the slack side of the chain to hopefully further reduce how much this chain slaps when you're at high RPM. In order to mount this tensioner to the block, I have these special shoulder cap screws, which fit perfectly inside here. I drill and tap the block to fit this bolt that mounts it. And then I add an additional bolt to set my spring tension. It's really easy to locate where your pivot bolt needs to be mounted. So small carpenter square come from the top left corner of the block here. It's nice and square. You're gonna come in two and a quarter inches and down three and three sixteenths inches. Square that up, make your mark. A little center punch action. Maybe asking how deep to drill in this position. You can drill clean through the block, right to the back side. That way you can easily clean out any chips. <clears throat> you really can't go too deep if you drill it where I told you to. If you drill it too far in, keep in mind you have a bearing cap bolt coming through here. So you don't want to be close to that, you'll weaken it. So two and a quarter inches in seems to be the ticket. All right, so now you see how this works. Shoulder bolt drops through here, comes perfectly flush to the bottom. I will put the part number to these bolts in the description below. They are critical to making this happen. Okay, so now we need to mount the spring. So essentially I just need to make another hole and I'll show you the dimensions of where that one goes. You wanna come over two and five eighths and you want to come down four and three eighths. You do not want one of these to fall out. So I use red thread lock on them. I never really take them apart anyway. Dab will do you there. Start by putting your lower one in. And next, your top bolt. I run one washer under the front side of it here. And if you look, the shoulder sticks just slightly proud of the plastic here. That way this thing will be torqued down all the way and will still be allowed to rotate. All right, and that torques down on its old shoulder, its own shoulder, so it's not pinching the tensioner. See how the tensioner is still free to move? Check your torque on these, don't break them off. And there you go. That's how I do 
the S54 tensioner on an M50, M52, or M54. Let's make sure the timing cover fits just as a sanity check. You can see here, timing cover fits totally fine. No interference there, plenty of room to move just like it's meant to be. Hope you enjoyed this video. <clears throat> this is something I've been doing for a long time now. I have not had a failure yet. It uses all OEM parts and you can do it for about 80, 85 bucks, I think. Um, so I will post a link in the description for where to get these bolts, what the part number for the tensioner is, and the chain. You can do this yourself. Thanks for watching Spanker Ants Garage. I'll see you next time.